My name is Elizabeth Henderson, and I am an author and speaker, and I'm happy to be part of 60 Conversations in 60 Days. I have worked with the Schizophrenia Society for about 18 years, and then started my own company, the Being Mentally Healthy Company. I've written a book. I have a website, beingmentallyhealthy.com, and I'm speaking for a living. My mental illness started when I was 15. I started to become depressed. My mom was an alcoholic and I started to feel like I didn't matter. I started to have suicidal thought. So I slashed my wrists and was admitted to the young adult program at the Foothills Hospital. They didn't put me on medication. There was no medication back then. It was 1979. I wasn't sure how to proceed. I came out of the hospital thinking I'm not fixed and the hospital hadn't addressed the alcoholism problem in my family. So really nothing had changed. In the middle of high school, I had a fight with my mom and moved out. I did finish high school on time, but my development kind of was stopped at that point. And I had another suicide attempt at 19 and was in critical condition for three days. When I came out of hospital and was in a period of recovery, my parents said, why don't you go to university? So I tried university, but my depression was getting in the way. I couldn't go to class. I didn't trust anybody. I was depressed. I was sitting in my apartment alone with the semester ticking by. I didn't know what to do. I didn't realize that it was a mental illness that I was experiencing. So I didn't have insight in order to get help. The day that I got kicked out of university for too many F's and W's, I met my husband, Wade. It turned out to be the best relationship of my life. He asked me to marry him. I said, yes, I had thought my depression was in remission. I thought I had it beat. But the stress of the wedding planning and the, the actual day was too bad for me. I had a breakdown after I got home from my honeymoon and I started to think that my wedding gifts were missing. So I called the police and the police said move. But we moved and we moved and we moved. Poor Wade just trying to keep his young bride happy because I was paranoid. I didn't want to go out. I closed the blinds, didn't want to look outside except for suspicious looking cars, which I occasionally watched the window for. Uh, I watched the door all the time, making sure nobody would come in. I lost a lot of weight. I thought my food was poisoned. I thought if somebody's coming in to steal our wedding gifts, they're probably poisoning our food too a lot of symptoms and then my best friend from childhood looked me up and saved the day she took one look at me and and realized I was psychotic I had stringy hair dark eyes I lost a lot of weight I wasn't functioning and she told Wade to take me to the hospital so he did that he did that not knowing what would happen he didn't know if he'd ever see me again I got the diagnosis six weeks later and it was a shock to me. The hospital put me in a goal group, three goals a day, make my bed, do my dishes for my mom, monumental tasks at the time. They've put me on medication. I had intensive counseling, CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, and it worked. That's when I learned that I could be in recovery. I, st I could recover from this. I had a guiding truth. If I was going to be well, it would have to be up to me. I uh, started to do what I call risklets. I just challenged myself every day to, to be a little stronger, be a little better, do, do what I can to be better. I had the same counselor for 10 years, so I had continuity of care. I had good psychiatry. I think that it's a multidisciplinary team that you need to get better. Cognitive behavioral therapy taught me that thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are connected. And so I really am experienced at managing my thought. And that can create a feeling and that can produce a behavior. So I try to manage my thoughts and be positive and forward thinking in my thought. And if it's negative, I deal with that, but I try to reframe it. So if I have a negative 
thing that I'm going through, I try to reframe it in a positive way. And that's not to say there's not pain associated with schizophrenia. It can be painful, but living in that pain doesn't serve anybody. I try to be the best I can be and know that my thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are connected. When I reframe things, I feel better about them and then I try to take the next step. A little wristlet, a little tiny baby doable step that makes me move forward. Some people call it a micro movement or baby step. But I just try to do something to make the situation better. I think that people can recover. When I was first diagnosed, nobody was talking about recovery. My belief is that you can be more positive if you believe that you can get better. And having a life that you like is my definition of recovery. As long as you're doing things that you like, that you have activities that make you happy, that you have relationships that are nurturing to you, that you're growing and stretching a little bit each day and having a life that you like. I think that that's the best therapy. I want to erase the stigma. That's why we're doing this. Some people say the stigma is worse than the illness and the illness is pretty bad. So you can imagine how bad the stigma is. So I've decided to be open about my illness. It's not appropriate for everyone. Everyone has to make their own decision about that. The reason that I chose to be open about it is I was part of the anti-stigma campaign in 1998 with the World Psychiatric Association. Some research out of England came to the forefront and it said that the only way you beat stigma is by meeting someone who's doing well. At that point I thought, well, the only way we're going to get rid of the stigma is if people like me are open about the illness and say it's okay. It's okay to have a mental illness. I believe that people can go back to what they were doing before they were so rudely interrupted or reinvent themselves. And that's what I did. And now I am stronger. People like me who have a mental illness are people and they deserve a life that is meaningful. It's not a hardship to have a mental illness in a way. I think my problems suit me the fact that I'm getting better is not uh, an anomaly. There's lots and lots of people that are getting better. It should be front page news. One thing I want to make it clear, it's been 20 years since I was diagnosed. So it's been a long journey. I've had two relapses in the process. Um, I still have symptoms that I'm managing, but if you try not to buy into the limitations of the illness, Work with your doctor to find the best medication and the highest functioning that you can manage. Yeah, so I, I wrote a book called Being Mentally Healthy in Spite of a Mental Illness. I think it's a paradigm shift. I think you can be mentally healthy in spite of a mental illness, even though you have a diagnosis. I'm speaking for a living, so I spoke in Chicago for the Forum for Behavioral Science and Family Medicine and I got a standing ovation from the doctors. They were really touched by what I had to say because I think people, medical professionals sometimes forget that people can get better and have a great life. I met some psychiatric nurses when I was speaking at the LPN conference. That's one of the things that they said is, we don't often see people who are doing well. We see them at their lowest point. And so to remember that recovery is possible and that people can rise up yeah it's it's interesting because it's a lifelong illness there's no cure so it's what I know I've been sick since I was 15 I'm in my 50s now and uh, there's it's a skill set so if you're struggling try to learn the skills to recover with a good medication good therapy a life that you like joyful activities you can recover a little luck. And uh, there is a little bit of luck involved with schizophrenia because some people do not get better.
that hopefully will be changing as the medications improve. I had a lot of help getting better. I'm still recovering, but it's going pretty good. And now I am stronger. People like me who have a mental illness are people and they deserve a life that is meaningful 